All right, so good morning. Um, first question, how are we doing with our homework? We've been assigning some homework, I hope. I pray you guys have been kind of dwelling on these things and that the Lord's working something on you about these things because today is test day. We told you there was going to be a test. It's today. So let's start with some review. We've been doing this, and I think, I think what God's doing is he's just saying it over and over and over again, drilling this into our spirits. So I'm going to talk about some of the things we've been going over. Um, of course, we've been discussing living in community. That's the big context of everything we've been doing. And we discussed the difference between organizations and family. How, you know, you can, if you view church as an organization, you're going to come in here and you're going to pay your dues or your tithes, whatever we call it. And you expect something from that, right? I need a show, right? Entertain me. Whereas family, we're in this together. This is all about growing. But the rules are different in each. Now, Nate really brought this home last week and how we deal with transparency. When someone reveals they're good, they're bad, and they're ugly, reveals their sin and how we react. So how the world and even our old nature wants to use guilt, shame, and punishment for a myriad of reasons to appear righteous, to avoid being hurt repeatedly, and to basically deal with that which makes us uncomfortable, namely someone else's sin. But how God is calling us to love, even in the face of great sin, to react from our spiritual nature, to, react, uh, to remember that but God, that could be us. And, and often in that spirit of, judgment and so forth it is because it is us right we hate most in others what we hate most in ourselves and these things come out of us to treat each other as god has treated us raya these are the house rules in family and we strive to live from the spirit in love and we have to train ourselves toward that end that's what this is about coming together we're training ourselves we have to count the cost. Decide now that we're going to commit to allowing Christ to live through us in every situation. So we've talked about vulnerability, and we, walked, uh, we talked about transparency in the last one. We put it in the context of covenantal love. All right? We introduced you to three Hebrew words for love. Raya, Ahava, and Dod. And I'm going to go back through them because we've got some people in the room that haven't heard these. So these were words that in the Hebrew meant love. And they just kind of had different meanings for love. Now, within the context of covenant, Raya says, I have seen your worst and I still want to do life with you. You have been transparent with me and I see you and I love you still. Now, Ahava is a commitment of the will. This is where we add to that love our promise, our commitment that I'm in this no matter what. All right? With our faith, in our faith, we say Jesus is Lord. Right? I surrender. I'm going to do it your way. And we commit our lives to following him in obedience and faith. In our marriages, these are our vows. I am with only you until death separates us. That's a hava. I'm in this. I'm in the hula hoop. Right? <laughs> That's how we see it here in this body. Um, there's many of you don't understand. Mike Spencer taught us a uh, great message about how are you. And he used a hula hoop. And he says, okay, are you in the hula hoop with everybody? Or are you kind of hanging on the edge of the hula hoop? Right? And, real, and, and ready to just let go if you need to. And that's kind of this, what, what Nate was unpacking last week, is if you're on the outside of the hula hoop, you're just kind of saying, okay, if you throw something out there too hard, right, you come at me with too much ugly, I'm letting go. That's, that's enough, I'm not doing that. But if you're in the hoop, no matter what, I'm walking with you. And then dode, all right? Now here's the thing. You can have raya, 
and you can have ahava. You can have each of them separate. Like in a, in a marriage, you can value your vows to the point that I'll, I'll take anything, but I don't really like this person, right? I'm stuck. <laughs> I married him. I'm stuck. I've, I can't break my vow. Or you can be like, I totally, I totally love you. I mean, I've seen your worst. I, I, I love hanging out with you, but yeah, I don't know about this commitment thing, <laughs> right? So you can have each of them separate, but when you have them together, then dode can happen. And dode can't happen if you don't have both. All right, this works with God, and we're trying to see how this works in here. But what dode is, is dode is the mingling of souls. All right, and, and what that's saying is like in the marriage, the two become one flesh. All right, or in God, Christ in me, and I'm in Christ. We're so entwined, our hearts are so entwined. I, 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 think, of, I think of the Trinity when I think of dode. Right, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, separate but one. Right, united in purpose. That's dope. All right, so we see these easily in our relationships with God and our marriages, but we went further. This is what I challenged us with last time and asked, what would these aspects of love look like if we lived them in community? We, if we, as His body, His church are to be his bride and have covenant relation with him together, how will that look? And then what will that say to the world about his love? Transparency through Raya. Here's fleshy me. We were Nate last week with the fleshy and the... All right, so here's fleshy me. Here's the me that I'm scared to show you. Here's my insane thoughts that go through my mind. Here's the sins I struggle with. And then the flip to transparency is how do we love someone back when they are transparent? That's the raya. You show me you're, you're ugly, and I'm going to love you anyways. So Nate really brought that home last week, I felt. Now, ahava is essential. It takes a commitment of our will to say, I'm with this body through the good, bad, and the ugly. I will not flinch when it gets hard. I will dig deep deep into my core, and I will love with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength, and I'll walk through the fire with each of you, my family. So I'm in the hula hoop. And then what would Dode look like? I'm sure we can all imagine, if we stop for a moment, what a body of believers who are transparent, who are accepting and committed, forgiving, discipling, and mingled would look like so here's the thing i know god has wired that into us right i i think um something inside of us longs for this and and even if we don't know what this is right like we can't define it and and i think this word really does kind of define it and one of the things i love about this body is our size all right we we know every single person here and we have history or we're building history <laughs> with each of us. We have walked through the fire with each other. I mean, I look out across this room and I just, each person I can look and say, I've walked through the fire at, at moments in your life. I've visited you in the hospital. I've prayed for you while you fought cancer. I mean, we have walked through the fire with each other. Imagine being in a large church, and many of us probably have. I mean, some of us go all the way back to the vineyard when it was, what, you know, 500 people where we could only have that deepness in our small group or in our Bible study class, right? We, we couldn't really, but when we walk in here each week, we know every single person, every single face. There's nobody out here that's like, you know, I, I don't know this person. And, and I think there's a beauty in that, that that we would miss if we were not in a body this size. So sometimes when we pray, Lord, grow us. I mean, I know we want to grow, but don't make us too big. <laughs> All right. We can walk this out, encouraging and strengthening, praying, healing, and being sanctified together as one. So today, I want to look at just a little different angle of transparency. I want to take, uh, take it out of the covenant aspect and the, and the love and look at 
the value of transparency in the oh, so we've seen it in the value of intimacy and the deepness of relationship but let's look at it in the con in the aspect of healing and you know how it helps with the consequences of our sin so there are those of us who are walking around with secrets that we hide from the world guilt shame and fear those things hold us in prisons within ourselves but what may hold us in prison as well and I don't think we think of this very often is maybe being a fellowship of the pious okay and what I mean by this is to believe that when we come to church that only positive experiences can happen right prayer needs to be positive the service needs to be positive that that's we need to do church and it needs to look good it needs to be clean and in that atmosphere when a real sinner is suddenly discovered people whose hope who place their hope in the outward appearance of holiness they recoil in horror right because now suddenly within us is something that we can't project that that can't come in here so how much poor, more pressure will the sinner feel to conceal his sin now I pray we all know all right I pray we all know that this church is a church of healing that is one of the foundations that God has built this church upon and I don't believe that we practice that that kind of piety at all but are there among us people who have grown up in that, right? And who, who kind of struggle with that, you know, when you've grown up one way and now you're in a church that's a whole different way and you're being drawn to that, but there's still a part of you that when things like that happen, you squirm, right? You're just, you're, you're God's working that out. Or kind of the flip side to that are there are there people in our body who fear that we are those kind of people right and if they if they share you know share their sin they're going to receive that judgment that we're going to react in horror to their transparency and they suffer they suffer so true grace right true grace not not cheap grace but god's grace God's grace is, is found when we join what more could be called the fellowship of sinners. All right. We know, back in the Beatitudes, we talked about being poor in spirit and mourning. And, and this was to stand before God and go, you know, this is what I am, God. You, you know me. You know these thoughts. You know the things I do. The things I won't tell everybody else, you still know. Right? And, and in that, we... If, if the work is truly done in us, then we stand there and we go, you know, my, my greatest acts are still filthy rags, right? At my core, I am trying to be all this, but I am a sinner, right? Now, this fellowship of sinners is marked not only by striving toward worshiping God, but also by radical honesty, all right, about one's sins and struggles. Tony calls it hot honest open and transparent all right when applicable that's important when applicable so it is a community that practices deep confession and frequent repentance and celebrate god's forgiving grace it's one of the reasons i'm so attracted to church under the tree because that's that's we it, it is a fellowship of sinners is this not where we find Jesus in the Gospels? Hanging with those who are not trying to hide who they are? Avoiding the ones who want to appear pious? He, them are the snakes. Them are the vipers. He's the one he's always going after. Now, look up here, because I really want you to catch this next part. All right? Dietrich Bonhoeffer once put it like this. He said, it is in confession the breakthrough to community takes place. Sin demands to have a man by himself. 
it withdraws him from the community. The more isolated a person is, the more destructive will be the power of sin over him. And the more deeply he becomes involved in it, the more disastrous will be his isolation. Sin wants to remain unknown. It shuns the light. In the darkness of the unexpressed, it poisons the whole being of a person. This can happen even in the midst of a pious community. It is in confession that the light of the gospel breaks into the darkness and the seclusion of the heart. All right, that's the end of his quote. So a while back when Jody asked us to pray, talk to Papa about revival, the word I had received back was transparency. And I knew what Papa was trying to say in, in sharing that with me, but I was struggling to find words to really put it in to express it. And he was, I mean, it was like he was saying to me, you want to spark revival? Develop an atmosphere that encourages transparency. All right, develop this atmosphere that we're talking about where we can come and be this way. Allow a sinner the freedom to reveal the traps he is caught in and confess to God and others so that together we could fight against the enemy's schemes. Do not let him fear exposure for judgment and ridicule, but instead let him witness, right? Let anybody that walks into this body witness my love in you, in action all around him, testifying of my desire to fully rescue him. What would that look like in this room? That's the question. What would Dode look like in here? Now, confession, confession's a universal truth. Even the secular world knows its advantages. There's a lot of people out there screaming, admit it. Right? AA, therapy, counseling, your deliverance, your progress will be marked by how transparent you are and how much you're willing to confess. Uh, Nate put it this way to me. Confession is the antidote to sin. We were talking about how sin is similar to a parasite or a virus, right? And how it gets inside you and it hides. And all it wants to do is stay in that place and be dark and replicate. So you don't know it's there. Now, luckily, our bodies warn us of that. But that's its desire, to stay and just replicate. And we know... I mean, look at COVID. We know, we know viruses just want to tear down the host. Sin is the same exact way. This willingness to confess is the bottom of the mountain in Beatitudes. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to take you back for a second. <clears throat> we're in the image of the mountain going up and, up and around the mountain. So at the bottom of the mountain, this is where we have owned before God that we need him to overcome the sin we struggle with. I can't do this. God, I need help. Right? We just talked about this last week. We have mourned the effects of that sin, how it hurts God and it hurts us. Right? And sometimes that's just as simple as, you know, I remember prayers in the beginning that were like, you know, God, I know I, know I sinned. I don't really feel anything about it, and I don't really want to stop, but I need your help. Right? To the point of just, you know, heart breaking, crying before the Lord. And we ask for forgiveness, being reassured that he still loves us. That's what he does. Right, you right, You brought that to me. I, st- I see you. I see you. And in that owning of ourselves and seeking God's grace, we are strengthened to deal with our sin in community with one another. To join this fellowship of sinners. This is meekness. All right, when we talked about meekness, when, when you've acknowledged who you are before God and that strengthens you because you know God's got you to then stand before others and go, this is who I am. That's an aspect of meekness. It screams, this is me. All my good, my bad, and my ugly, and he still loves me. And he still loves you too. Now, in this place, in this fellowship of sinners, transparency is cultivated as a value. 
as a healing agent. Now, let me quickly address an important balance. The fellowship of sinners that I'm discussing here, this is an identity, right? This is, this is not the new spirit man I am walking forward. That's not the identity he's walking forward in as a sinner, right? God already sees him covered in the blood of Jesus, right? Already sees him in the throne room. So what I'm talking about here, um, I'm, not, I'm not saying to embrace sinner as your identity, new man's walking in freedom from that the cross has set us free but Jesus is taking us out of that old identity and teaching us to walk in this new spirit and in that place God doesn't see us as sinners but while we're here on earth right and we're stuck in these flesh suits we're going to struggle as we walk through sanctification now I love the illustration Nate gave us last week I've already kind of been pointing at it but I'm going to go a little more detail because I know some of you weren't here there's two of me. I was unpacking this for David this morning. There's two of me that you're going to encounter, and we look just the same. All right? One is the new creation, being sanctified, learning to walk in the Spirit, seeking to love God, seeking to love others. You'd think it was me. Wait, I'm sorry. But the other one looks just like me, right? Sounds like me you would think it was me. Um, until it acts in a way that makes you go, hmm, is that Mike? That's not the Mike I know. Right? That's fleshing me. Still walking in that old sin nature. Digging its heels in. Right? I, I, I got this image, you know, like here's the new man trying to walk. And here's the old man. Got his, got his arm, got the back of his shirt or something. Just being drugged along with him but doing everything he can to hold that new, that new man back, trying to maintain the darkness and the secrets, wanting to separate and hide. And, and I was thinking, this had to be Adam and Eve in the garden after, after they ate the fruit, right? And, and the, oh my God, I'm naked, and, and I got to hide. And, you know, God, <laughs> God comes into the garden, and he's not like, He's not asking the question because he doesn't know, right? He's, he's giving the opportunity to Adam and Eve to be transparent. And he's like, where are you, Adam? Right? And, and a couple of weeks ago, Mike, at uh, the Father's Sons that we did, man, where, there you are. Um, remember when Charles was playing and, and he was playing, just doing his little thing, and, and whatever was popping in his mind, he was speaking. And he said that. He said, where are you, Adam? And, and the spirit in me said, where are you, Mike? You know? And it was just... So, um, but here's, here's how God deals with us, right? He doesn't, he doesn't come after Adam and Eve and, and drop this condemnation on them. He's more like, who told you you were naked? Right? Who told you that you have that identity? Right? He knew it was a consequence, but what's his, what was his reaction? He went and made clothes for them to cover their shame. And that's what God does. We sang about that this morning. He takes the shame. But we, we have to come out of hiding, just like Adam and Eve. We've got to come out of hiding and be transparent with him. And in that, we find healing from the actual consequences of our sin and the traps that bind us. So transparency, transparency is at the heart of healing from our sin. That which we hold in, in secret and darkness, the devil is going to use to twist and destroy us. And I believe that deeply. I've believed that for a long time, that anything we hold in here and we don't share, then, I mean, God can work on it, but really... In that dark, secluded place, that's where the devil works on it. And he grows those lies and builds strongholds around those lies. And, and we just become more and more and more scared to express that. And, and just trapped. It's, it's insidious. But that which we expose to the light, and I've said this often at Church Under the Tree, that which we put out into the light, God's going to cast the shadows off of it. Right, whatever's dark in it, whatever's we don't understand, when we put it out there, 
especially in community among other people, then other people and God look at it and go, no, no, that's not what that is. And the shadows are cast off of it, the lies are cast off of it, it loses its power. Then, all right, then we can walk in that light in, in a deeper freedom and a deeper intimacy with God, with our spouses, and in community.